the video where we had a little chat on my way to Walmart to pick up my groceries that I had ordered. And while I was there, I was talking with one of the managers who brought my uh, items out to my car. And I was telling him how the other store sucks. You know, they never have anything. Even if you go inside, that the shelves are always empty and everything else. And it is a smaller Walmart. You know, this is a super Walmart. Now, they do call mine a super Walmart, but it, it's far from super. Let's, I, I would call it par. <laughs> but anyways, so he explained to me why that is. So, Walmart, they have so much product available in their warehouses and what they do is they allocate it to the larger stores and the smaller stores kind of like get what's left so they make sure that the larger stores that are producing the most money get more product and this is coming from a multi-billion dollar company trillion dollar company however much money Walmart makes you know I mean they have stores all over the place and everything else but what they're doing is is the stores that are making them money they get all the product to make sure that their shelves are always stocked so the reason I'm bringing you this video is if you live in an area where you have say a smaller Walmart and you find it difficult to find products, whatever you may need, you may try driving to a larger Walmart. Now, like me, I gotta drive 20 miles one way to go to this store, and then 20 miles back. So that's 40 miles I gotta drive, but I always get all my products. Now, I do the online, I order it online, and then I go pick it up because this store is too far to do delivery to my home. If I want a delivery, it has to come from the Walmart closest to me, which is the one that is by far par. So the moral of this is you may have to step outside your boundary and you may have to take a ride and go to a larger store and I'm sure that all the other stores are doing the same thing that this Walmart is doing. You know, your, your Costco, Sam's, um, BJ's, all this. If it's a bigger store or they produce more money, they're going to get more product. So you may just have to do a drive to get everything that you're looking to get, especially if you're stocking up for your hurricane preparedness. Now, he was also telling me that a lot of people have been stocking up. He's seen in people's grocery bags, flashlights, batteries, um, lots of canned goods, extra water like what I got today, and all this type of stuff. You know, you buy your bottled water and everybody wants to know about how long it lasts. Well, they say it'll last for at least six months. But if you rotate it and you're using it in your daily routine, your daily, you know, drinking it and everything else, you won't have a problem. And I have had cases of water that's gone past six months because I keep always keep a stockpile in my house because you just never know what might happen. So I never run any lower than four cases of water in my home. Now that's the big cases, the 40 packs. So this way here, I know I always have that type of supply. And I do have uh, several different types of jerry cans that I can fill. They're plastic. I did buy them at Walmart. Uh, I know the prices have gone up on them since I bought mine because I bought mine years ago when I first moved to Florida back in uh, 2013 and to make sure that I can store more water for other uses such as maybe bathing, cleaning, those type of things.
But I just wanted to bring you guys a quick video on what this guy was telling me and why my store sucks and I have to drive down here to get the products that I need, even on a daily basis, the stuff that we use. Because even if I go into the store that's close to me, there's nothing on the shelves. And there's nobody stocking the shelves. It's like, evidently they just don't have the product or maybe they just don't have the people. So maybe this could be a little tip or trick to help out people to maximize your preparedness and the things you need to be prepared for either hurricane season, another cyber attack, gas shortages, supply chain shortages, all this different type of stuff. But you still need to be prepared and you have to figure out ways how to do it. So that's why I wanted to bring this quick video to you so you guys would really know what goes beyond and behind the scenes of some of these major retailers. We're all dependent on that supply chain, folks. And evidently, there's not enough supply to go around to all the chains, if you get what I'm saying. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Remember to thrive to survive, folks. And make sure you're doing your homework. And make sure that you're being ready for the next major catastrophic event that could really impact your area wherever you do live because it's only a matter of time before something will happen in any given area and any given part of this world so until next time folks i'll catch all of you on the flip side